thanks for joining the Fusion Access demo here. I'm Chris Plum, the product manager of this, and we dive right in. So as with any other operator, we install Fusion Access from the operator hub of OpenShift. And what we did here is it's a bit special because Fusion Access is one of the IBM products um, that is immediately available in the Red Hat operator store, um, but you need to set up your pull secret um, for the IBM catalog anyway. So you will find it, but to uh, finally install it, you need to actually set up your pull secret for IBM entitlements. So now we installed it, we need to create the Fusion Access CR. This will um, bring up the, the pods with the operator inside of your OpenShift cluster. Uh, it's fairly easy, no questions asked, just click the button, accept the defaults, that's just fine. Um, then we continue on, once we've done that, we need to uh, create a cluster. Um, it's also very simple. Now that we have the operator in there with the UI plugin, we find Fusion Access for SAN in the storage overlay. We click on Create Cluster. We select the nodes that are connected to our storage. This sets up the cluster. Now on top of the cluster, we're going to create a file system. So you click on Create File System. This is actually the thing that will connect to your SAN LUNs. So when you click on this button, what I'll see is you'll be um, presented with a list of this, which are available on all those nodes that you selected earlier. These are basically your LUNs. And so in this example, we're going to uh, create two file systems. Um, the first one will obviously be called file system one. <laughs> so um, we know it's the first one. It's backed by one disk, which is available on all the three nodes that we selected earlier. And then once that is done, let's wait a little bit for the file system to be created. By the way, this is all running in uh, somewhat real speed. So you'll see that this actually just takes a little bit of time to uh, create this shared cluster file system. Now it's created. Um, we wanna create a second one, file system two, with the second disk that's also available on all three nodes. So we do that. And that's that also takes a little bit of time And what you already see here on the right is the storage class column. So you see for file system one, we have a file system called file system one. For file system two, we have a storage class file system two. And this is exactly how your users would then identify how to store the different data. Um, so file system can be backed by any kind of LUN, can even be LUNs from different SAN devices. So maybe you have a SAN device that's ultra fast, has um, lots of NVMe or flash disks, and then you have another SAN which is more economical. Um, so it's using maybe a mix of flash and HDDs. You can expose that at different file systems. Now we're switching over to the user persona. So the admin has created this. Now the user wants to use that storage to create a VM. So we go in, we just tag regular um, CentOS Stream 10 VM, nothing fancy. The only thing you have to change basically is the storage class. So we select one of our two storage classes that we just created. We set a disk size that we like. We click on create virtual machine. That automatically in the background goes and allocates the PV puts it on our new um, Fusion Access file system, and now the VM is ready. Well, it's provisioning, but <laughs> eventually it will be ready. Now it's running. Now we can do things inside of the VM. So as a little test example, we're going to uh, log in. 
yeah, we see it's in file system one. So um, let's go into the machine. Yeah, let's make this a little bit bigger. So we log in with the password. And what we're going to do is we're just going to write a little string into a file that's on the VM disk. And um, then we're going to migrate the VM to a different hypervisor and we're going to read out that little file again. Um, the special thing about Fusion Access is because it's based on a clustered file system, all the data is available everywhere all the time. So what's actually happening is this hypervisor now has a direct connection to your SAN, to your LUN, which is mounted locally. But then when we're migrating the VM, the other hypervisor also locally accesses its LUN directly with the SAN. So you don't have something that you're used to with the other SDS operators where you have multiple replicas in OpenShift where the access to the data is going through the network of the OpenShift cluster, but this can go directly via the, your fiber channel network if you have that, or via your iSCSI connections. So now we um, have migrated the VM to the different hypervisor and we're reading out uh, the file and obviously the content is the same so that um, that worked without any incidents. Now, as the last thing, we're, we want to look a little bit at the GPFS dashboard. Um, so this comes from the IBM Storage Scale product that we have. It's an IBM proprietary product. It has a nice UI which provides a lot more information on the underlying um, GPFS uh, backend uh, than you have currently inside of OpenShift natively. And with that, I say thanks for watching and see you around.